G'day, Patrick Vinerand here, orthopaedic surgeon from the Brisbane Hip Clinic. This video is on the topic of the causes of osteoarthritis. It's a really common question. A lot of people are interested in why they've developed this condition, um, primarily because I think that they're interested in um, whether or not there's anything that they can do to be able to prevent arthritis ensuing in the other hip or indeed in other joints. The first question to answer is what is osteoarthritis? So when we talk about arthritis in the hip joint, we talk about um, two main types. There is osteoarthritis and then there's inflammatory joint disease. And indeed there is sometimes a little bit of a blend of the two, um, but it's useful to think of the primary disorder as being either osteoarthritis or inflammatory joint disease. And this presentation is going to be about osteoarthritis. To be able to differentiate between the two, um, inflammatory joint disease uh, are those conditions uh, like rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis, um, some forms of uh, crystalline arthropathies like gout, um, those sorts of um, um, conditions. Um, osteoarthritis by comparison is a wear and tear disorder. So it's a disorder that is characterized by the microscopic accumulation of small amounts of cartilage wear over a really, really long period of time. The analogy that I would often give is like the wearing of car tires where you don't necessarily just have um, worn car tyres or not worn car tyres. Indeed, um, there's people with partly worn car tyres and that's a very, um, I think, good analogy here because osteoarthritis is a, a grayscale condition where a, a person can be experiencing symptoms but not necessarily um, um, severe symptoms nor indeed to the point where, for instance, joint replacement is required or necessary. Uh, because they are lower on that scale of degree of wear. When we think about the causes for osteoarthritis, it's useful to classify the condition uh, into two main groups. There's primary osteoarthritis, uh, what's otherwise known as idiopathic, or alternatively there's secondary osteoarthritis. So secondary osteoarthritis is where there's a, a really clearly defined cause for the development of the degenerative joint disease. So examples of this might be, for instance, um, childhood or adolescent hip disorders uh, like um, perphase disease or um, dysplasia or alternatively um, traumatic conditions like fractures and dislocations um, where there's been some form of derangement or injury to the hip joint um, which has led to the accelerated wear accumulating within the joint over, um, over a relatively earlier period of time. So people with secondary osteoarthritis generally are the younger folk. So they're the people who will um, present earlier in life with, um, with degenerative joint disease, maybe in their 20s, 30s or 40s. Um, and often it's um, easily diagnosed um, by uh, evaluating the shape of the hip joint um, by x-ray or alternatively on the history of them having a known childhood disorder or some sort of traumatic event. Primary osteoarthritis is where there's no one singular identifiable cause for the development of the osteoarthritic degenerative joint disease. So probably the most important factor contributing to primary osteoarthritis is family inheritance. So we do know that there are some people who have family lineages with um, very durable cartilage and um, indeed the relative incidence of osteoarthritis in those families is um, relatively low. But uh, unfortunately there are some people in whom um, there's quite a lot of osteoarthritic wear at an early age throughout their family. And so clearly there is a, um, a fairly strong genetic component to the development of primary osteoarthritis. There are a number of uh, potential contributory factors to the development of primary osteoarthritis. They might include things like obesity, 
um, activity, volume, and nature. But the um, relative importance of the contribution of these factors is somewhat debatable. The relative incidence of primary osteoarthritis compared to secondary osteoarthritis is um, somewhat debatable. Um, the reason why there's uh, a degree of uncertainty is that there is in the community quite a, a large number of people with what we would best describe as borderline irregularities in the shape of their hip joint, which resemble uh, the changes that might contribute to someone developing secondary osteoarthritis. An example, for instance, might be someone with a slightly or very marginally shallow hip socket or someone with a, a very slight irregularity of the shape of the ball of the hip joint. And so the debate really relates to um, does that very slight shape irregularity meaningfully contribute to the development of osteoarthritis at all? Suffice to say though that um, as a, a ballpark figure, probably about 70 to 80% of people who develop osteoarthritis in the hip joint have what we term primary osteoarthritis, which means that there's no clearly identifiable cause. And then the smaller group, that is 20 to 30%, may have some form of structural irregularity from birth or alternatively acquired um, during their lifespan, which has led clearly to the development of osteoarthritis within the hip joint. A common question that I'd be asked is, um, did I cause my osteoarthritis? Um, People who ask this are wondering whether their sporting pursuits or their active lifestyles has contributed to the development of their arthritic wear. Um, the short answer for the majority of people is no. Um, and the reason being is that um, whilst um, it would be natural to think that the hip joint is a, a mechanical um, device such that the more you use it, the more you'll accumulate wear, just like a set of car tyres. That, that analogy is probably overly simplistic in a biologic sense because there's so many other contributory factors um, that lead to the development of osteoarthritis. For instance, things like um, um, uh, family inheritance is really important. So for instance, we would see um, quite commonly um, quite elderly folk who have been very active throughout their entire lives who have developed no osteoarthritis at all. And yet there may be some very young people who have led relatively sedentary lives and um, they've developed osteoarthritis at a very early age. So clearly activity levels um, aren't the primary contributory reason for the development of um, osteoarthritis. Um, having said that, um, it is true though that if you start to develop osteoarthritic wear, so if you're a person who has some underlying mild or moderate degrees of cartilage degeneration within the joint, the more activity that you do, the more likely you are to experience symptoms, um, particularly with certain activity styles, for instance, impact pursuits and those sorts of activities that involve um, very deep ranges of motion of the joint. It's important to recognise though that those activities that cause symptoms in osteoarthritis aren't necessarily leading to the progressive degenerative change within the joint itself. So whilst, for instance, a given pursuit might exacerbate some symptoms if you have some underlying wear, it's not necessarily true that that activity has led to the wear in the first place. So that's an important differentiation because a lot of people when they come to see me with moderate grades of wear often ask do I need to stop being active or do I need to withhold from um, having a, a, an active sporting lifestyle and the short answer to that in the majority of cases is no. Why is only one hip and not the other? And um, there are some conditions that might predispose people to um, unilateral one-sided hip joint disease. Uh, for instance, in the younger female population group who's developed um, significant degenerative joint disease, there's a, an over-representation 
of um, people with dysplasia in the left hip. Um, so younger females with uh, advanced degenerative joint disease probably a little bit more predisposed to it being left-sided. Um, likewise, um, Perthes disease is a little bit more common in males and particularly if they're performing um, sporting pursuits that involve cross midline kicking, for instance, um, AFL or soccer, then there's probably a slightly higher incidence of os earlier osteoarthritic wear in the right hip in younger male patients. Um, but the effect is marginal. Um, by and large, the answer to that question, why is it only one hip and not the other, actually um, um, comes down to luck. Um, and indeed, we can't necessarily identify a, um, a, a cause for one side becoming worn faster than the other. A common question that I'd be asked is when a person comes to see me and they have um, quite severe symptoms from osteoarthritis in one hip, but they've had an x-ray done and um, it shows both hips and uh, the other hip also has osteoarthritic wear but it's not causing any symptoms. And um, so the natural question there is um, why is this one giving me symptoms and why is the other not giving me symptoms? Um, and um, I think um, it's important to understand in the answer to that question that um, osteoarthritic wear, uh, in fact, is um, commonly non-symptomatic. So um, it's a um, condition that takes quite a lot of time to be able to accumulate. And in that accumulation, in that phase of accumulation of degenerative wear, a lot of people are blissfully unaware and in fact have um, minimal symptoms or no symptoms. Um, so it's only when a person gets to a certain threshold of wear um, that the joint then starts to become symptomatic. So it's actually very common to see um, non-symptomatic wear on the opposite side. Uh, the important um, the important discussion that comes out of that though is that um, the treatment that we would recommend for someone with osteoarthritis is um, really determined by the degree of symptoms that a person is experiencing. So if you have non-symptomatic osteoarthritic wear, which has been incidentally diagnosed on an X-ray or an MRI scan, uh, indeed the appropriate course of action there is for continued observation. I hope that you found this video on the causes of hip osteoarthritis of value. If you uh, want to read more around the topic, there's uh, a lot of information on our website at brisbanehipclinic.com.au. Have a great day.